Well, we got good news on the environmental front for those of you who are, you who are worried about CO2. Let's share this article one of my uh, subscribers sent to me, which is pretty interesting, from Energy In-Depth Climate and Environment, sent from, uh, this was uh, back in July of 2018. So let's start right here. U.S. per capita uh, carbon emissions at lowest level since 1950. Since 1950. Now, I'm going to read you from my uh, my man Howard Hayden from the Energy Advocate, his newsletter, which you should get if you're interested in this stuff. And uh, it's just it's such a plethora of uh, just, man, charts and, oh, man, I love it. Look, charts on top of charts on top. It's just fantastic. And here's what Howard says. This is from his uh, September 2018 newsletter. Uh, For as long as I can remember, people have worried about the imminent paucity of oil and natural gas. The worst scare was about natural gas, which seemed to be in such short supply that it could be used only for critical purposes. I did a video on this uh, about a month ago about how Carter legislate or Carter signed legislation. Basically, it's a temporarily uh, or I guess not temporarily necessary, but saying, hey, only use natural gas for emergency situations. Everyone transfer to coal. Coal. Carter. <laughs> Because natural gas was in such short supply, we had a transition to coal. It's nuts how uh, things have changed. That was in 1978. I can't remember what the bill was called, but uh, look at some of my old videos under the energy uh, segment. You'll find out. Uh, The shortage was entirely man-made. The price was held artificially low, so that there was no incentive to go looking for more. Huh. How does that always happen in uh, command control economies? We are going to dictate the price from the top. And when the price is so low that uh, no one can make a profit on it, there becomes less and less of supply. Who would have thought that could ever happen? Venezuela. Uh, Let's see. So, okay, the, the price was held artificially so low, there's no incentive to go looking for more. There's also no incentive to look for more coal, but for a totally different reason. The known reserves were so immense that there is no shortage foreseen for centuries to come. There is no shortage of energy, says my man Howard. Nuclear energy, while not renewable, is sufficiently abundant to last until the sun expands and swallows the earth. Uh, I love it. But that's not the context of this article. Thanks to natural gas was U.S. per capita carbon emissions the lowest since 1950. New uh, from uh, Seth Whitehead, uh, July 27, Dateline July 7th, my birthday, 2018. New EIA data released this week shows that the U.S. per capita carbon dioxide, CO2 emissions, are at their lowest levels since 1950. That's per capita. As the emissions per capita column from the following EIA chart shows, 2017 CO2 emissions were 15.8 metric tons per person, their lowest in 67 years. And here's your consumption per capita, and there's your million uh, BTUs, British thermal units. And then if we go to uh, metric tons of carbon dioxide per capita, and 1950 is at 15.6. And then we fast forward until 2017 is at 15.8. And we had a, did we ever break 21? No, nope. So in 2005, we're at 20.4. And that's been going down ever since. Now, some of us can attribute that to Obama, put more and more regulations on there. Absolutely, some to do that for sure. Uh, but others will attribute to other things too. Now, here's consumption per capita, or here's consumption total per capita. All right, so quadrillion BTUs in 1950 was 34,000 in terms of primary energy consumption. Are you with me? We fast forward, 97,000 today. All right, so in terms of we've tripled our consumption uh, in total consumption, primary energy consumption in uh, in those, what's that, 67 years, tripled it. But consumption per capita was 227 in 1950 and 300 now. We have not tripled our per consumption per capita in terms of total energy. In fact, my man Howard shows that when, after we got out of the, the 100% renewable age, a, I, i.e. the 1850s and into a combustion engines and things of that nature and using oil, we've actually only increased our energy per capita consumption by about four times. That's it. Uh, the only reason the consumption is growing so much is because more and more human beings being on the earth. Now, that's where a lot of the greens, the Paul El- El- Elricks and whatnot, and a lot of these uh, these somewhat sympathetic China one-child policy and whatnot, 
human beings they look at as a liability. We're causing damage. The more humans there are, thus don't have kids, limit to one. We need more family planning. We need a limit to one child. We're all going to die and such and such. And yet uh, that's it. I mean, really, between a guy in 19, 1850 to a guy today, his level of energy and consumption has only grown by four times. That's it per capita, which is nuts when you think about it. So that's not I mean, you might be shocked by that. Consumption per capita has gone from 227 million BTUs to 300. Consumption total has gone from 34 quadrillion BTUs to 97. But the bulk of that is simply due to population increases. It's uh, it's amazing when you think about it. I, I, I'm, I'm stunned to have learned that. Uh, for some per perspective, per capita carbon emissions haven't been this low since the beginning of the Korean War and the publication of the first Charlie Brown uh, uh, comic strip. The EIA and other reputable third party sources have been very clear as to why this is happening is because the increase in use of natural gas, which has been made abundant and affordable by advances in horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing technology, fracking. Overall, U.S. carbon emissions are at their lowest level since 1992 and have declined by 13 percent since 2005. The EIA has credited two-thirds of the energy-related carbon reductions achieved since 2005 to natural gas. Not to PV, not to wind, to natural gas. So PV and PV is such a small potato. It's not that even worth talking about. Wind has actually contributed to the reduction in CO2 without question, not to the extent of natural gas. Not, nothing comes close, uh, especially when you factor out the amount of consumption of energy we're using from where does it come? Does it come from natural gas or electricity in particular, or does it come from wind? It's, it's just really it's not debatable. Uh, perhaps even more remarkable than the fact uh, that the per capita carbon emissions are down so much is the fact per capita GDP has increased uh, more than four and a half percent during that time or 45 percent during that time, while the real GDP net of inflation has increased by 38 uh, percent. Uh, uh, since uh, the U.S. GDP has also increased dramatically since 1950 as a falling Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis charts. 1950s when we had per capita carbon CO2 emissions this low. And look at that sucker. It's just gone up like a crazy man. I mean, it's just freaking so how can you not be optimistic, man? We got cheap, abundant energy. It's just it's uh, it's it's freaking awesome. George Mitchell, the man, man of all men from uh, I think it was the A&M guy. Or he gave a lot of money to him. I can't remember. But A&M guy Remember, because everyone else says natural gas was done. It's on his back. It's never come back. And here's this guy, George Mitchell and others. They say, well, let's see about this. They invested their energy, literally their energy in their wealth to see this happening. And here we are benefiting from the abundance of natural gas. I, I just uh, I love it. Uh, the coupling of economic growth with the greenhouse gas reduction. Remember, greenhouse gas consists primarily of CO2, carbon dioxide, and methane. Methane is much, much more worse of a greenhouse gas if you're concerned with that. And what is methane? It's the poop that comes from cows and other things. You can find lots of, uh, uh, if you go to um, those frozen lakes in the in the uh, Siberia, they have lots of greenhouse gas from decaying uh, uh weeds and things of that nature and bodies all that has methane gas and that really is uh, contributed to is a big ghg but it's not much of it relative to co2 for sure so greenhouse but anyway that's why uh, the green new deal with alexander ocasio cortez and all these guys uh, they wanted to get rid of uh, cows i mean literally they want you to go vegan because the methanes of the cow farting uh, is bad for global warming is their argument it's not because, they, I mean, yeah, there are some who think, hey, it's bad to you know, kill innocent human or humans, but innocent animals, cows. But most aren't like that. Most say, oh, methane gas is bad. Thus, we should all go vegan. That is what's going on here for sure. And I won't do that because I like the, the taste of beef. Ideally, is from a grass-fed uh, farm in uh, Stanton, Virginia. My man, uh, Joel Salton. Uh, from Polyface Farms, there's tons of other folks running around your neck of the woods who do a uh, grass-fed beef for sure. Uh, Free-range chickens, the whole thing, absolutely. It's a little bit more expensive, but man, it's good. Go buy yourself a half a cow. It's good stuff there. All right, uh, the coupling of economic growth with greenhouse gas reductions in the U.S. is currently enjoying an unprecedented in, in history. The fact is coinciding with the ongoing shale revolution is no accident. Natural gas is more affordable and available than any point in U.S. history. This led, has led to natural gas-fired electricity generation increasing 81% since 2005 from just 19% back then in terms of total electricity generation. 
Uh, it's nuts. I have a guy uh, I talk to who's in the oil industry and uh, he's getting ready to retire, but he tells me natural gas, bad for oil. <laughs> I laugh because that's what he told me. I said, oh man, uh, because natural gas emits far less CO2 than other traditional foods, uh, fuels, fuels, power plant carbon emissions dropped to their lowest level since 1985. And the IEA, International Energy Agency, summed up what's happened in the U.S. when it stated the U.S. has led the world in cutting CO2 emissions since 2008, thanks largely to natural gas. Natural, natural gas. Uh, the uh, emissions in the U.S. last year were at their lowest level since 1992 in a period in which the economy grew by 80%. A recent study conducted at Carnegie Mellon reveals that carbon intensity, which is the total carbon emissions divided by total output uh, from the U.S. Uh, power sector, is, is down 30% percent since 2001. Uh, the report also notes that declining generation from coal and increased generation from natural gas and wind are the primary drivers for the CO2 intensity decrease. Man, that is... Incredibly, the U.S. leads all major nations in carbon reductions this century. In fact, the U.S. decreased carbon emissions 42 million tons from 2016 uh, in 2017, more than any other country, while renewable and regulation happy Europe collectively saw emissions increase by 92 million tons, including year over year in Germany and France. <laughs> and they give us a chart here of the CO2 emissions dropping like a brick and water and the GDP going up and the GDP going up as well as natural gas consumption. My friends. Don't be ne negative. Don't be nervous, Nelly. There's so much to be happy for. I, I mean, the, the world is your oyster like it has never been before. Cheap, abundant, clean energy sources for you for electricity ge generation. The world runs on electricity. We have energy uh, to uh, electricity generation from huge amounts of natural gas. It's nuts. Nuts. I don't get the whole thing with nuclear. Why the uh, the folks who hate CO2 don't like nuclear it doesn't make any sense at all. If you look at James Lovelock, uh, Lovelock, uh, the guy who wrote the book Gaia, uh, something like that. Uh, he's a big, huge proponent of increasing nuclear because he says, look, CO2 is a problem. He does believe that's a problem. And he says, but if we're going to deal with the problem and we're going to keep our level of affluence, uh, we need to increase nuclear for sure. And, uh, and for some reason, the, the folks on the left don't want to do that, even though they uh, decry CO2. I, I just don't get it. I mean, unless you're going back to 1850s level of living, when it's 100 uh, percent renewables, uh, you're not you just no one's doing that. I mean, it's just not happening. And I won't do that. I'm telling you right now. So that there's no other way. You need to get the energy generated. You need to get the energy from someplace. You need to get electricity generated from someplace to live the life that we live in the Western, uh, our standard of living. Uh, and if you, and you're not getting it from PV, you're not getting it from wind. So it's got to come from someplace. And if CO2 is the enemy, then natural gas is better and nuclear is best for sure in that. Or you got to go back to living like that was back then. And no one's going to do that. I'm just telling you. So anyway, be optimistic, be happy, lots to be thankful for. I would say get on your knees and say it. And I say, God, thank you for giving the smarts and the intensity to people like George Mitchell uh, and there's many others. We'll we won't even know who these people are uh, that have done wonderful, wonderful things in science to advance our life and our standard of living. It's wonderful to be alive. Take advantage. We'll see you next time. Thanks now.